it's not fair. It's a great saying, used by so many people, my children included. You know, when they see one getting something they don't get, it's not fair. And one of the things I say back to them, well, who said life has to be fair? Who says we're all the same? We're all very different. We all need to be treated differently. You know, some people are good at, uh, you know, intellectual skills, reading paper. Other people are good at cognitive skills. They can, you know, see space and, and paint. And I'm useless at painting and, you know, I can't spell. I can see maths and add up. But, you know, um, we're all very different. So life and things are not fair. Uh, and one of the things that I've noticed in business terms is customers tend to now have caught onto the habit, it's not fair. They get a 10% discount, I don't. Why is that? And the reason is, is they spend 10 times the money that you do. They're bigger, they're more profitable. But it's not fair. Aren't I just as important as them? And I'm afraid the short answer to that is, is probably not. Not no, but probably not. And the problem with businesses right now is they don't actually play that card. They play a very straight bat of, we need to be fair to all our customers. But customers are not the same. Customers are very different. Customers use your products for different purposes. Your products perform different uh, things for them. They value your product differently. So, when we look at customers, we need to understand straight away of which customers we should treasure and look after and which customers we should avoid. Because there are a whole bunch of customers out there and I have said on numerous occasions that I actually believe businesses have too many customers, not too few. And the problem is they can't identify which ones are not doing their business any good and which ones are. And it isn't just about the revenue they generate, it's about the profit they generate, what it costs you to acquire them and what it costs you to serve them. If a customer is sending all the goods they ever buy from you back, then they're not very good customers. Um, and there were examples in the catalogue world of people ordering goods on a Friday or for delivery on a Friday and sending them back on a Monday, having worn them over the weekend. Well, they order lots of product, but they're not very good customers because they keep on sending them back. And if you don't put those things together, together with the amount of revenue they do generate or profit they do generate, you end up treating customers in a, as a homogeneous mass. And that doesn't allow you to create stronger, longer lasting relationships with those customers that you know, maybe do spend more money and are better for your business. One of the products Blue Sheep has been developing over the last two or three years and has put into the marketplace to great success for a number of clients is money mapping. It segments the clients into four quadrants and two of the extremes of those quadrants are those clients you should treasure and those clients you should avoid. The treasure clients are those that spend lots of money with you. But not only do they spend lots of money with you, they don't cost you lots to serve. They, they make one phone call, they buy their goods, you deliver them in bulk, and they don't return very many, i.e. You know, your cost of serving them is quite low. And the profitability, therefore, for your business is, is great. On the other hand, you have the avoids. Those people that might order one product every other day, and you deliver it so your delivery costs are high, your costs to serve are very high, and then they return lots of products and services as well, um, and they take long, a long time to pay you, or the sector is fraught with difficulties and lots of them go bust. And those things are really quite easy to model, but once you can identify the clients that you should treasure and those you should avoid, you're really in a far better position to look at your marketing and sales effort and ensure it's targeted at those that are treasured and not on those that should be avoided. Too many businesses, when they come to seek new clients, think that they need to treat everybody equally, i.e. it's not fair. So they advertise, they try and advertise in magazines that you know, have a, a slightly higher proportion of the customers they want, but fundamentally they are dragging in lots of people that they don't want. And I was reading some news the other day about a large mobile telephone company that was attracting some 800,000 opportunities to sell one of its smartphones to, but was rejecting 300,000 of them 
because they didn't meet the credit rating criteria that the company was setting because of the increased levels of first party fraud that are going on. So they rejected them. My question is why, do, why attract them in the first place? Because if you were building something like a money map, you could identify those sectors that you didn't want to get people from. And you could identify those sectors where you did, and you could focus your effort on those that did. Um, and treasure them. Because life is not fair. We are very different. We're very different in the way we think, we're very different in the way we, we act, and we're very different in the way we behave. Um, and if we continue to go down the it's not fair route and try and make everything fair, as we have just done with um, car insurance, male, female, you're not allowed to dis discriminate between uh, male, female drivers. It's not fair. But I don't regard the way that we now have a homogeneous m mass of everybody must pay the same to insurance. That's not fair either. Um, it's proven that female drivers have fewer car accidents than male. So male must pay for their risk. Their risk is great. Um, and it'll cause all sorts of problems. So it's not fair. No, it's not. But get on with life.